Hello everyone, Lothar here from GTO Esports. We're going to talk uh, quickly about the changes in patch 915, which is already live on servers. Uh, surprise, surprise. And yeah, and we'll see what are the changes that, that seems to be the most impactful and uh, what do they supposedly do to the meta. Uh, let's start with the system. A very big change that will affect a lot of players is the win and lose streak. Uh, since we, were, we are having the breaks at 2, 5, and eight wins or loses, right? But now it's gonna be two, four, and seven. So it's it's gonna be easier for players who are on a win streak to have even bigger advantage. But at the same time, players who have been on the lose streak will earn a little bit more money uh, earlier than before. Since TFT is a very aggressive game, losing like five or seven or eight, you know, times in a row most likely will mean that you're dead already. So with some changes in this patch, might actually be maybe there's a possibility of doing a uh, lose streak strategy. We'll see. I don't anticipate it, but it might be a small possibility. In my opinion, I would rather see the win streaks being kept as they were, so two five eight, but the lose streaks being two four seven. But right now they're both two four seven. We'll see how that goes. Now class breakpoints. That's something new. Uh, they added. A new synergy for Gunslingers at 6, Gunslingers, Brawlers at 6, Shapeshifters at 6, and Blade Masters at 9. All of them are not playable since there are not, no additional characters that are able to push those traits into those numbers, apart from Blade Masters, because you can do uh, the Blade Master item uh, for a character to be a Blade Master. So you can actually do Blade Masters 9 if you have 3 times bla uh, the Blade of the Ruined King. Uh, but other than that, they're just added to the game for the future, so it's not really that impactful yet. But to be honest, if someone pulls off a Gunslinger 6, a Shapeshifter 6, Blade Master 9 probably would just sweep everyone. Uh, at least Shapeshifter and Blade Master seems very OP. Uh, Brawler 6 gives you insane amount of HP. But you know what? No point in talking about it since you can't really do it. But I will try to do the Blade Master 9 with the ad additional free items. Now, I think the biggest change of this patch is the player damage. Something that I complained about very, very much, which is the Spiderlings damage. Now it lowered. Spiderlings, each Spiderling deals one damage instead of two, and the Golem also deals one damage instead of two. So how does this translate to the live game? Because of this simple change on Spiderlings and the Elemental Golem, I think a lot of players will always have like an average of five health over the game more than before which is an insane change and will slow down the game alongside other changes as you can see here uh tier four units deal two damage instead of three tier five deal three damage instead of four and the most playable ones so tier three two stars deal three damage instead of four that is a lot of changes that will slow down the game in general which is insane insane and the game might become completely different completely different like i don't i don't really know what is the average gain life uh life gain uh from those changes but it will change the game alongside the win streaks alongside um the champion changes it will make the game more i think towards the late game than early game and that makes me happy now another big change that we see is the carousel stage now it has nine units instead of ten why is it impactful? Because now, as the top two players in the game, you will only have three options, not four. And that is also a very big nerf to the players at the win streaks or at the top of the bracket, which might be a good change, actually. We'll see. But I like it. I like it for now. It also makes uh, the, the, let's say, the breaks uh, between the champions a little bit wider, so you might not be, like, taking a champion that you don't want because someone bopped into you, you know? Now, assassins have insane change, and since I didn't play the patch yet, uh, I'm not sure what would be the conclusion, but assassins jump earlier and jumps are quicker. Non-assassin champs' move is, the movement is slowed for the start of the combat, and assassins can be targeted sooner. So from, from what I understand here is that it's going to be tougher for the assassins to de-corner a composition from the corner of the map 
so it might be tougher for assassins to actually get to the backline, which kind of defeats the purpose of the assassins. But this this requires a lot of testing, a lot of uh, you know just uh, seeing how compositions positioning work, and uh, it's kind of hard to say. But it it feels like you can counter assassins earlier. Alongside that, they got buffed a little bit. Evelyn got buffed because demons are getting nerfed in this patch, so it's a little bit impactful. Like, the, the AD damage uh, is impactful because of the Assassin's trade. The ability damage is being uh, buffed on Silver level, which is the most playable one. Right, 50 damage there is actually a big change. Uh, Katarina got buffed to more targets, which is, like, not that impactful because Katarina is not that great. Rengar, though, got buffed to more AD damage, which is very impactful because Rengar is typical uh, auto-attack champion with the attack speed at the same time and the buff on his ultimate, so Ranger seems to be very, very good right now, I would say. Very, very good. Especially when you think about the wild uh, trade, Ranger might be a new, uh, new assassin that everyone wants to build. Now, when it comes to Demon, we know that Demon is one of those traits that kind of shuts down an entire game, right? Because if you just burn the mana of your opponents, most of them, they can't really play the game. Unless you're a ranger or um, or gunslinger, which they don't really, let's say, relay on ultimates as much as other um, other or other compositions, this one, uh, any any other one, kind of gets defeated by the fact that you can't just play spells, which is unfun mechanic. And I feel like demons will get a rework trait in the future. But for now, there's a less chance of proccing, and it's a big nerf. At the first uh, two demons, it's only 20%. At four demons, instead of 50%, you have 35, which is a big change. Alongside that, there's a lot of nerfs as well. Virus ability on bronze level is actually way more impactful. Uh, sorry, way less impactful. 300 damage instead of 400 damage, uh, and that's the biggest change. Uh, then Atrox uh, got v very much nerfed. On the bronze level, he deals only 250 damage instead of 400. That's a very big change. After magic resist, he deals like around 200 damage AoE, which is not that much, uh, which makes him still a. I mean, he's still a powerful bronze tier three, uh, but I don't think he. I don't think he he will be a staple whenever you get him. You know, the nerf at silver level is impactful from 700 to 600, but it, he still has the possibility of just insta giving champions, and especially since it's AoE it's still very playable. He got less um, 50 HP also at the beginning, uh, which also makes him let, less impactful early game, uh, but I feel like as a champion for mid game, late game, he is still very playable. Morgana got nerfed very similarly. Uh, her bronze level now deals 200 damage, which is not much. Uh, instead of uh, 300, her animation got also nerfed. It's actually slower. Before that, she was she was like instantly popping the damage, which is a big thing. But now if it takes time and it deals less damage, she might be not a staple anymore. Uh, the damage is not that significantly nerfed on silver. So she might still be very good at silver, but at bronze level, she might not be uh, better than a silver tier one unit. So we'll see about that. Dragon, my favorite change in this patch, apart from the, from the damage to, to players, dragons are not magic immune anymore. Instead of 100 magic immune, uh, they have 83, which is a big change because now suddenly they're not a counter to a magic damage composition, which is pretty good because it felt really unfun when someone just had Shivana and um, Asol and you were just like, well, I guess I die, you know? Uh, but at the same time, they got buffed a little bit. Shivana gained 10% armor, which is a big change in my uh, her uh, It might make her playable. On bronze level, since she has now 10 additional percent of uh, damage reduction from auto attacks, and that was one of her biggest culprits in the beginning of the game, because he just fell flat, you know? So you can make like a, let's say, Elise, Silver Elise, Silver Needly, and Bronze Shivana, and maximum work, you know? So this might be a very big change. Um, Aurelion Soul got buffed by 50, uh, 50 HP, and his damage got buffed at silver and gold. Um, it's okay, I guess. 
I mean, they're not as powerful as they were before, so a little bit of a buff might not hurt. We'll see. And then Elemental is another big uh, nerf and a buff at the same time, because, you know, the Golem now deals one damage, which is fine. Lissandra got significantly buffed. Like, really significantly buffed. She might actually be playable, because her damage at the ult is now 275, which is an AoE. And before... Like, before the patch, Lissandra was the champion that was always just frontlining, you know? Because, first of all, she doesn't deal too much damage. When she gets below 50% uh, HP, she she casts the ult on herself, making her invincible, right, for the period of time. Uh, but right now, I feel like with the fact that you can get Glacials, right, and you get a lot of damage from her ult on silver level, and it's kind of easy to put uh, to build her on silver, on silver you might be able to make her a caster that actually deals a lot of damage and having a powerful ultimate. Uh, so I kind of like it, you know? I kind of like it. Lissandra might actually get playable. I'm not saying she will be like a top tier caster or something and you will not put, you will probably not put items at uh, on her at all, but she is actually a champion that doesn't suck anymore. Uh, brand ability damage got, deals more damage. Which is okay. I mean, he got nerfed on demons, and this is why he got a buff on the damage on the ult to not make him like way less impactful. Now, when it comes to guardians, this is a very big change, a very very big change, and it will make guardians insta playable, in my opinion. Uh, the guardian stack is now giving 50 armor per stack, and guardians don't buff themselves because they got a just a buff on their base armor. So Brown's starting armor is 75, while Leona's is 100. That's nuts. Like, Brown, right now, if you watch my stream, you could sometimes see that I actually play early game Brown, uh, Brown's Brown, because he's very tough to kill. With additional 50 armor, he's almost unkillable by auto attacks in the, in the early game. So it's actually nuts how Brown powerful will be uh, in the early game. And Leona with 100 armor will make a fantastic frontliner. So, Guardians might be the new flavor of the week. We'll see how that goes. Now, Knights, another big, big, big change, and there will be a counter to a lot of, um, let's say, ticking effects. Uh, so, they changed the way the trade will work. The, instead of blocking 20, 40, 80 damage from auto attacks, they, uh, your team, entire team, it's a global effect for your composition, blocks 15, 30 or 55 damage from all sources so if i understand correctly this also works on true damage but who knows um but the biggest thing biggest biggest thing that happened here is that you deny the damage from an example a cannon's ult you know because cannon's ult works in small like blocks of damage you get damage per second right and your team ignores like 15 or 30 damage from each of them, from each of those small ticks, that makes like a 50% or even more a damage reduction from ults like Cannon, uh, from ults like, let's say, uh, Brand, right? He gets basically nerfed. <laughs> uh, from ults like, let's say, what else? Shivana's Fire Dragon, uh, Anivia, um, what else, what else, what else? Stuff like that. The AoEs or just effects that have persistent damage over time, um, they just get nerfed. But apart from that, they also got buffed. Darius has 40 armor instead of 25. Garen has 40 armor as well. Both of them are super tanky now. Uh, Mordekaiser has 40 as well, so... Okay. Sejuani armor has 40. So all of the knights have starting 40 armor. That's nuts. Like, 40 is really a lot. Like, Poppy was having 40, and everyone was playing Poppy if you play a knight, because she was just so tanky. Now, imagine every single one of them being so tanky. It's actually nuts, you know? Um, so, knights will be very playable. Sejuani stun duration got buffed. I don't know why. I don't understand. It was already long as hell, so I don't understand this buff, but okay. Uh, Kyle HP got nerfed to 750, but armor got buffed to 40 to match the other knights. So I guess that's why, you know, it's like 5% here and a a, a little bit more than 5% nerf on the, her HP. No way. Uh, I mean, Mordekaiser will not be playable because the night bonus is great. Uh, Alright, Ninja. 
Ninja, big big change, but to be honest, not that big of a change. Uh, so the trait is now working differently. Instead of doing additional auto attacks damage, it changes AD and AP. So if you have one ninja, that ninja has plus 40 AD and AP. Not, right? And when you have four ninjas, you have plus 60 AD and AP. Which makes it insane, I would say. Uh, but alongside that, Shen got a buff to attack speed. One of my favorite characters, and suddenly he has a 0, zero, zero 07 attack speed. He's a blade master. So, Shen blade master with synergy is actually dishing so much damage right now. It's gonna be insane. Uh, Z attack speed got buffed by 0 05. Z attack damage got buffed by 5, which uh, makes him very playable as a singular ninja. Um, cannon ability damage got nerfed significantly from 400 to 225 and from 650 to 450 but at the same time as a ninja you get additional AP damage so you want what does this make is that an example I myself uh, was a lot of the time playing Shen and Cannon at the same time because I was running Cannon for the ultimate not for the AD damage and Shen was just the tank right uh, because I had other damage dealers but Cannon was still doing a lot of damage from the ultimate, but right now, if you want to have a meaningful Cannon, uh, cannon uh, ability, you will need to only run him. This is why he got lower damage on the ultimate, but with the additional AD, uh, sorry, AP uh, buff from the singular ninja, it will almost go to the level that it was before, but not really. So, Cannon got significantly nerfed, but actually not really, but at the same time he, get, he did. Uh, now, Akali got nerfed as well, but not really. So, she did get buffed, and she did get nerfed. Depends on the situation you're in. So, it's kind of a weird, weird change, but to be honest, I think like four ninjas right now are gonna be nuts. Uh, especially for Cannon and Akali, and for Zed, their ultimates might deal a lot of damage. Like, even more than before. We'll see. Another very big change. Uh, game changer, to be honest. Noble now gives you magic resist so noble was doing plus 100 plus 100 armor and 35 life on hit right now it gives you 60 armor and 60 magic resist and plus 35 hp on hit which is nuts it's nuts it's nuts the magic resist changes the entire trait and will be something that people would like to build in the end game because 60 magic resist on everyone in your build is mind-blowing it's mind-blowing and very powerful effect so uh having noble even as a three or just full uh makes it very impactful like just imagine that having three nobles right and we have garen we have leona and let's say we have lucian or vain which good buff and we're gonna get to that uh you get a three noble buff on a single character and suddenly he gets let's say, three items worth, you know, because he gets, like, three negatron cloaks, and he gets, that's actually six items, and three, uh, and three vests, that's insane, for a very small synergy, that's a very big payout, a very big payout, so, noble three might be something that you would like to splash a lot of times, alongside the changes to the basic stats of, an example, Garen, right, this is very big, now, Vayne could also nerf, sorry buffed significantly buffed her at attack damage is now less uh, it's now 40 damage instead of 45 but at the same time her attack speed got buffed by 0 10 which is very big because of her true damage with the with the mark so vain might actually not be the best tank <laughs> anymore because <laughs> she has less armor than the than the knights from noble and now she actually has a meaningful attack rate so even as a ranger, she might be playable, you know? Like, I never liked playing a ranger 4 because that means you play Vayne, and Vayne sucks. But now, with this change of attack speed, I feel like she might be meaningful. And then we have Garen attack damage changed from 55 to 50, but his attack speed changed to 60 instead of 55. So, big buff to Garen, in my opinion. I always prefer to have higher attack speed than higher AD damage because it generates more mana for you. Pass the ability and so on. But at the same time, Garen abilities got changed 
Uh, on silver level, it deals 460, not 450. Uh, that's it. Because silver... Um, sorry, on bronze level. But silver level got unchanged. So And no one cares about gold, to be honest. So when he's playable, which is the silver most of the time, he didn't get changed. But he's not going to be the best Garen in the universe because he's actually spinning now and moving. So he's not um, he's not that minus 20 HP guy before uh, because he actually moves while ulting. Good change. Now pirates. Pirates got a little bit of a buff. Um, more average gold to from 1.6 to 1.75. Good change because, you know, it still kind of sucks. But uh, if it's too good, then it breaks the game. So I guess it has to be like a tamed uh, number. Graves' attack speed was buffed by 0.5, which makes him more playable as an on-hit uh, carry. So having red buffs, uh, having uh, curse blades, having disarm, having uh, hush, all of that is now more playable on Graves than before. Um, I know a lot of people played it already on Graves. Honestly, I don't like it, but now it might be a little bit buffed. Now, Twist Fate. Twisted Fate might be playable now. Improved cast speed makes uh, his animation faster, which I feel like will be very impactful because it was too slow. When he was gaining mana, he wasn't playing all his ultimates because it was just so slow. But now, it, it, with the improved cast speed, that make, might make him a playable um, carry with some items, so we'll see. Uh, also, his ability got buffed to a significant amount when the damage actually matters. 150 damage on bronze and 250 on silver makes it a very big buff and an example his AoE damage will now be very impactful. All right, Void, my favorite. I think this is my favorite patch uh, patch change and I'm not sure if this will not break the game, but I'll definitely try. Uh, so now, instead of the old Void bonus which ignores 50% armor, it deals true damage. True damage is not affected by anything, basically. Well, maybe apart from night trait. Well, I'm not sure yet. We'll have to test it out. But if you deal true damage, it goes to everything. It just if you deal 65, you deal 65 to the to the uh, to the champion. There's no damage reduction. There's nothing that can happen, and he just get smacked for that 65, which will make a Chogat insane. Which will make a Rexai very playable. Which will make Kazix mind blowing. You know, so, and they got buffed as well a little bit, you know, Cassidy attack damage got buffed by 10, but at the same time his attack speed got nerfed by 0 0.5, which makes, um, which makes him less tanky because he gets less shield, but at the same time he hits harder, uh, so it's like a compensation for that. Uh, so he will be a bigger damage dealer, but he will get less, um, less shield for himself, you know. Uh, Kazakh's ability damage got buffed when he, when the champion is isolated by 50. When someone is alone, you get, instead of 250, you get 300. So his damage when he's like doing 500, he will now deal 550. Kazakh attack damage got buffed uh, by 5 as well. Rek'Sai attack got buffed by 10. And the ability damage got buffed by 50 and by 100 on bronze. So it... Rexa is actually dealing now a lot of damage from her ultimate, but at the same time she heals way less. And I feel like this is the reason. Uh, the reason for that is because she might deal now true damage, and if she heals too much, she might be uh, un actually unkillable. Uh, Chogat attack speed got buffed, so he gener generates mana way faster now. But also ability damage got buffed when it comes to damage by 100 on silver, which is nuts. And ability knockup got nerfed a little bit by. On silver, got um, it got nerfed by 0.25%, uh, sorry, by 0.25 milliseconds, uh, which is a small nerf, but it got significantly nerfed at gold, which doesn't matter. Um, then Yordles. Then Yordles are in a... got buffed a lot. Uh, basically, uh, basically what, what, uh, what happened is that now at three creatures, they got buffed for um, 5%, dodge, so it's instead of 25%, it's 30%, and that's a big buff uh, for three Yordles, but the biggest buff is that they dodge on hit effects. So if someone has red buff, disarm, same entire, and so on, and you dodge the attack, there's no chance of that on hit effect to actually have a chance of happening. A very big buff. At the same time, Lulu got nerfed uh, by 5 armor, not that significant, because she typically is not a frontliner. Vega got buffed by his HP, 
I don't know why, but it's okay. And now our AD damage got nerfed, uh, buffed a little bit. So, but in general, dodging on hit effects is the biggest buff for Gordles. Other champions. Uh, Blitzcrank has less mana now, which makes him, uh, let's say, he will cast his second ultimate way faster. Uh, 25, 25 mana, uh, I would say that's around... Two and a half auto attack, so it's way faster for him now. It's like a one second and a half faster than before, unless he has to travel. Uh, Asher damage got buffed by five. Kindred damage got buffed by five. A little bit more damage for you know, for the Rangers. Uh, Morgana cast time got nerfed, as I said before. Uh, Yasuo damage got buffed. Uh, so he might be even more nuts than he was before. Cartus damage got buffed. I don't understand why. Everyone knows that Cartus on silver is like almost unkillable and he do and he kills everyone, but now he even kills more. So uh, because not only damage but also targets got got buffed. I don't know, man. Cartus seems insane. If you can make silver Cartus, he wins the game alone. Uh items. Big change to Locket. Uh 200 damage, uh, sorry, 200 HP got changed to 250, but the shield lasts for four seconds. Um I'm kinda happy about this change. Um, I'm not quite sure how it will pay out, uh, but it feels like it's still impactful against assassins, it's still impactful against most compositions, but it will not break the game when someone just gives like three lockets, you know? So, it gives you initial resistance to burst damage, especially against assassins, but um, against other comps, it's not really that impactful. If someone has a slower comp, the lockets don't give anything. Ionic spark damage got nerfed from 200 to 150, but if I'm not mistaken, now they stack. So, I think I'm gonna try three Ionic Sparks and see how that works, because I can, if I can deal 450 true damage to a champion after he plays an ult, I think that's playable. Uh, Hush Silence um, duration got nerfed from 5 seconds to 3 seconds, which still makes it a little bit playable, but I don't feel it's like a, it's like an item that gets priority. Uh, 5 seconds was a very powerful effect, 3 seconds not that much. So we'll see. Static Shift damage got nerfed from 100, 100 to 90, which I feel like is not... It's not that big of a nerf, uh, but at the same time, when people were stacking like three shifts, right, and on a ranger, uh, and now suddenly you deal 10% less damage every single, like, three attacks, that is actually a significant nerf when you think about it. So we'll see. Um, and clarity and uh, virtual effects changes. Anything impactful here? E yes, that is actually a very impactful change for Gangplank, um, because he has a better placement of his... Uh, barrels, but at the same time, when he starts his ult and dies, he the other barrels are still exploding. So it's a very important buff for Gangplank. Before that, it was actually very sad to play Gangplank at all. Uh, Kyle got upgrade, uh, cannon, not important, not important, not important. Some just some new animations. Uh, bug fix, uh, Rex is now healed by redemption, very niche. Darken item gives no longer mana, which it was like fixed two times already, apparently. Um, Vayne can no longer apply silver bolts to someone in Shen's ultimate. I guess that's a good change. Frozen Heart got unbugged, I guess. Maybe it will be possible to play it. Uh, Dragon Claw will no longer reduce true damage, which is okay. I didn't even know that it was happening, to be honest. Uh, and the play button goes back to ranked when you go outside of the game. Great change, Riot. Great change. Alright, and that's it. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk.